World Cup, how he always. <laughs> no, I, mean, I just, I just enjoy the occasion, I suppose, you know, and I just love to play my own natural game. So um, you know, I, I enjoy being being in pressure situations. You know, it's something that um, I, I thrive on in the past, and hopefully going forward in the competition. There can be a few more tense situations that I, that myself and uh, other, other teammates can, can get us over the line. So what is it in your mind when you have, like, you almost got used to these crisis situations and it's very difficult to play your national game but somehow you managed to do it, like what's happening in that mind, is it blank or is it your thinking or like? Yeah, I think, you know, um, to be honest, I'm quite a nervous watcher, no, um, you know, but once I get out into the middle, everything relaxes and, you know, I'm... I suppose I'm, I'm very fortunate that I have the backing of, of, the, of the staff here and, and all the players, you know, that to, to go out and play my natural game. Um, you know, I think I'm a far better player when I look to be aggressive, um, you know, and, and, and look to give, get in on, on, on wickets and then look to play my shots. So I think that's a good thing, being able to have the freedom to be aggressive and, and look to, look to take, the, take on the bowling and to score boundaries. But Kevin, it's like easier said than done, but I'm sure you'll be preparing in some way to play your national game because the scoreboard will always be at the back of the mind of any cricketer. Yeah, I think it, I think it, the, the scoreboard is always there, but you can't focus too much on it. Um, you know, I think if you start worrying about the score and the situation of the game, you know, that's when you, you tend to freeze up and you don't play your natural game. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm confident and, you know, it's, it's a thing we have in the team. Um, that if the ball is there to hit, even if it's your first ball, you look to hit it. Um, you know, I think it's the way we've played over the last probably four or five years. Um, you know, we've looked to try and play aggressive cricket as a batting unit and a bowling unit, and, and that's when we've been at our best. Um, sometimes we we don't play as freely or as aggressively as we can do, and that's when we come unstuck. Okay. Uh, when you go to the crease, do you have a plan in mind? In the sense, do you zero in on bowlers, or you do you have your scoring areas where you concentrate on? Like, like how do you go about your hitting? I mean, I, I of course have scoring areas, and you know, and but I, I tend to look as well as those scoring areas. I mean, because I'm sitting on the sidelines for a long periods of time, I, I, I can I can see what bowlers are doing and, and if they're swinging the ball or what line and lengths they're bowling. And, you know, it's it's quite easy to pick up if bowlers are having a bad day. You know, and then I really look to target that bowler if, if a certain bowler's not hitting his yorkers or he's, he might be bowling too full or too short. That's when you look to take on that bowler, and if you can get on top of him early, right. you know, it puts the pressure back on all the other bowlers. Right. So, what was the homework yesterday? Like, what did you notice when you were sitting down in the dressing room waiting for your turn against UAE? Yeah, well, well, I noticed the the. Spinners, even though I didn't face much of them, they were bowling uh, quite straight, you know. But they had all the offside up, and you know, for me, I, I, when I faced the spinners, I would have looked looking to go through the offside or even over the offside, you know, to try and get it hit it over extra cover. And you know, I think the the, the seam bowlers were, were bowling full, right. which which brought into into our well, my game was right. was hitting straight back and hitting hard and. Um, I think the gap is not a very big ground straight. You know, one one end is, is very small. Um, you know, and and I knew if I had a 75% hit, um, you know, that I could clear the ropes. Uh, what's the method in a sense like to your hitting? Like, do you ha do you watch somebody's videos? People like Gail or like is is anybody an inspiration? Gail is the one name that comes to mind. But in case if you have people you look up to, like uh, I, I look up to. A lot of players, you know, but I think my own technique, it, my technique is my own technique. You know, it's something that I've worked with for the last 10, 12 years. Um, you know, I, I don't try and model my game on, on one specific player. Um, obviously, there are areas that, all, that a lot of players have, um, you know, and I, I try and take little bits of pieces from, from every player. Um, you know, someone like Chris Gale is a one in a million. Right. Um, as is A.B. de Villiers, so right. for me to bat like them would, would be wrong and would be taken right. away from my natural natural game. You right. know, I, I just look to fine-tune my strong areas and, and work work on my weaknesses to, to become an all-round batter and bowler. So it's it's a, it's a technique that I've grooved, I suppose, over the last 10 or 12 years, and you now it's just looking to always try and improve 1%. Right. Uh, so in case if you can share, like in case the things which you have picked up from uh, great players, like can you share a few things? Yeah, well, I think the most important thing is is to be really still. Right. You know, when the bowler bowls the ball, and you know, I think the, the head position for me is crucial. Um, you know, if I can get my head straight and my eyes level, you know, I I can access the ball. And, and I mean, I know I'm, I'm 
a big strong guy. You know I mean, if I can get a, a 75% hit on a cricket ball, it's going to yeah. more often than not travel over the rope. So I mean, that's I don't look to try and over hit a cricket ball. Yeah. Um, you know, if I can time if I can time the cricket ball, you know, I'd say if you ask a lot of people in the world, um, you know, Chris Gale, and Brendan McClum, for example, would be two of the biggest hitters in, in world cricket. They, they don't they don't often try and overhit the ball, you know, Chris Gale strokes the ball for six. Uh, he's a big guy, he's, he's a strong, big shouldered guy. That's something I've learned from from playing overseas and playing against these guys um, in twenty twenty and stuff. If you just time the ball, the ball you know, it's harder now with two new balls at the end of the innings it, it comes off the bat lovely. Right. And how important is reading the bowler's hand like that's where you spot the ball first. That's where you get the length right. Like, uh, when do you judge the length? That okay, now I need to go back. I need to go front. Yeah, yeah well, I suppose you know, you just try and pick it from the hand. Um, you know, of course, there'll be there'll be certain days when you pick that length up a lot easier, and right. you know, some days you won't pick it up as easy for, for whatever reason. You know, that's right. just the game of cricket. Um, but I think the more and more cricket you play, and the more you face of certain bowlers, you all, you you often know just from facing them so often you know their action you know when they release it where they release it and mm -hmm. you know it, it, it gives you a little couple of percent advantage on the bowler right. and then of course it comes down to the individual on the day if, right. if you're hitting the ball well or he might be bowling particularly well you right. know that's just a game of cricket uh, do you at times do people underestimate the whole science of hitting people say that we talk about Gail and or you talk about Rahul Dravid we talk about these guys in a very different way like we call them methodical and we call somebody like Gail as a as just a smasher like but do, do you think these the straight is underestimated the, the thing which you guys have I, I think there definitely is a technique to to hitting a cricket ball you know it's not just you swing as hard as you can you know, right. obviously you have to watch the ball and uh, that's first and foremost in any cricket shot whether it's a it's a forward defense cover drive or are you looking to hit a bowler back over his head if you're not watching the ball you're not going to hit it right. and so to give yourself the best chance of, of being successful in whatever shot you just really have to watch the ball hard and uh, that's something I say to myself every ball just watch the ball and just play your natural game you know if, if I can do that more often than not I'm going to be successful so as a kid like there were too many broken window panes around your house <laughs> you always been this kind of a batsman <laughs> well when, when me and Niall and, and our, our other brothers and sister used to play cricket in the garden. If you hit it out of the garden, you're out. So that's difficult for you. Uh, yeah. So you were the worst player. I, guess. I was the worst player. I used to used to face two or three balls, and I'd hit it out of the garden. I got six and out. So, and it was a very small garden. Right. Um, but you know, I suppose. Now you get back to them saying that. Okay, yeah, now exactly. It should be six now instead of being out. Okay. So what are the kind of messages you're going uh, getting from back home? Like. There's still huge expectations, as in like there will be more expectations now. And yeah, the support has been fantastic again. Um, you know, it was it was a long day, or a long time since we played our first game and second game. But the support we got in in that period was, was great. Right. Um, I think the media have been excellent again. You know, Sky Sports have, have been very good. Right. Um, back home, you know, the, the print media, the radio, right. the local TV. You know, they right. really jumped on right. jumped on cricket again, which is right. great. Um, it's just a shame that. You know, it can only come once every four right. years. Right. Um, it's it's something that obviously, as players, we want to be playing more games against the likes of India, the likes right. of Af uh, Pakistan, West Indies, New Zealand. Right. We want to play them 15 times a year. Right. Right. It's the only way we're going to really improve. Um, you know, and hopefully our performances in in the first two games here and, and further down the field in this competition, we can get more games against the big powerhouses. So, how many SMSs or how many radio th talks have you thousands, done? Thousands, thousands. You know, it's with, with Twitter and Facebook, you know, and, and, and WhatsApp, you know. After after a game like yesterday or, or the game against West Indies, you spend about an hour going through, <laughs> seeing who's messaging you. Cause how many the, messages I, you had in your phone when you, oh, when you took it from the dressing room? I would have had maybe 250. Oh, God. Um, so, you know, and of course... For me, I like going through them and, and seeing who's replying. Because without the support, you know, okay. without the fans back home or fans anywhere in the world, you know, yeah. it's, it, it means nothing. Yeah. You know, and, and we're we're very we're very grateful to the support we get from back home, but support from all around the world. You know, I know a lot of Indian people support the Irish cricket team, yeah. and yeah. just the way I, the way we've played in the last eight yeah. years. You know, I think. We're probably the second most supported team in India. In right. India, so right. I think that's that's a great thing right. to, to be to be a part of, you know. And it's the support we we get from from all over the world is fantastic.
Okay, last thing uh, about the crane stance, what it was. <laughs> you I thought just, about it or you just came? Yeah, just one of those things. Uh, I mean, the, what was it? the batsman's surname was Karate. Okay. So, it was just one of those things. Was, no, I'm here to have fun. You know, right. I'm here for seven weeks to play in, in, in a World Cup. Okay. And if I'm not going to have fun playing here, you know, I mean, what's the point of being here? So I'm just going to have fun, hopefully get a few wickets, score a few runs, and you might see a few more strange celebrations. <laughs> so after the chicken dance, is the grain stand the next Irish thing? <laughs> I, I don't know, we'll see. There might, there might be another celebration for the next game, but we'll, we'll take, it by, take it by game by game. Oh, okay. thanks a lot, Kevin. Thank you. Thank you. Can you have the grain stance once, please? You want it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, Thank you. Thanks, man. Thanks a lot, guys. You're such a sport. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, man. We'll see you later on in the yeah. Yeah. tournament. Yeah, I'll try. Hamilton? Yeah, Hamilton, I'll be there. Oh, yeah. Cheers. Thanks, man. Thanks. Thanks.